Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to be doing a tutorial on a Raspberry Pi and a DHT11 sensor using those to read temperature and humidity with Python. Uh, we'll start by reading it out to the console, but uh, you know, kind of as a bonus, we'll be sending it to Splunk so that we can chart it. Um, to do this, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi, a DHT11 sensor, I bought mine at Fry's Electronics, and they called it an HUMI-01 effectively it's a DHT11 sensor. Um, you're also going to need those jumper wires. Uh, if you want to do the bonus in Splunk, uh, you can actually download Splunk for free, uh, but it is not open source. So up to you, but uh, really we'll go through how to read the sensor in Python, and uh, the last part we'll just spend the, just a few extra lines to send that data to Splunk uh, so that you can chart it and save it over time, as I've done here. So, um, let's get started. So we'll hop into our Raspberry Pi console, and the first thing we're going to need to do to, you know, make this work is uh, install the dependencies. I'll include all of these commands I'm typing in in the description, so you can just copy and paste that to your Pi. Um, I'm using the console here, Smart TTY. It's kind of like a putty kind of console. Um, either way, all we'll do is we'll do an app get uh, update and upgrade. Uh, make sure you have git um, python installed and then from there we're going to clone the DHT11 library from git. So again I have all these commands down in the console so uh, we grab them from there. And for physical wiring uh, this is a three wire sensor so you'll have a positive wire, a negative wire, I'll go to your 3.3 uh, volt or your 5 volt on your Raspberry Pi, it actually does either. Um, you'll have a ground and then one signal wire. So there's a picture of the actual connection online. Uh, you can see again, you're going to have the, in my case, the first pin, the third pin down, and then, you know, the eighth pin down, it looks like. So um, either way, you know, you'll have to know which input pin you used. If you follow mine, that will be pin 18. So let's change a directory into the uh, folder that we got from Git. This is the DHT11 library. Now let's take a look at their example. So you'll notice here they're including the DHT11 library. Um, and they use the pin 14 by default. Actually, I have mine plugged into pin 18. Uh, I use pin 14 for a different project. And this is their example script that comes with the library. So we should just be able to run this script and get a temperature and humidity return, which we do. So that's perfect. So the sensor's working. Uh, that is built into a loop, so it'll just keep posting it here over and over again. So great. Uh, really, at this step, you can take that example script and you can change it in all sorts of ways uh, to do whatever you need it to do. OK, so now we're on to the bonus bit. Um, at this section, what I'm, we're going to do is basically push this data into Splunk. Now, I'm going to assume you already have Splunk installed, but if you don't, I'll include a link in the download. Um, basically, Splunk runs on Windows or Linux. Uh, if you go to their website, you can download it for free, and um, there is a paid version, but for our case, uh, we'll never make enough data that we would ever need the, the paid version. So, uh, either way, let's let's get rolling. Um, what we're going to do, the first part we're going to do in Splunk once we have it installed is you'll have to go to the IP address of the server you installed it on or your if it is just installed on your Windows PC, that would be localhost uh, port 8000 and that will bring you to this page right here. Uh, from there, we're going to go to settings, we're going to go to inputs, click on TCP and click on add new input. We're going to have to give this a port. Now we want to make sure we use something over the well-known ports uh, just because uh, to use a, uh, a well-known port requires administrative access and we don't want to have to run our script as the brute on our Raspberry Pi. So let's uh, not yes, use a port over uh, 1024. I chose 9050 here. Um, from there, we'll click on Next. Uh, in the input settings page, we're going to be using generic single line. Uh, so make sure you select that. And then we're going to create a new index to store our data. Now in this case, you can just follow along, call it whatever you'd like. Um, 
if you want to get more into Splunk or if you already know about it, basically this is the file that will store all of our logs. Um, and it lets us set the maximum size and that kind of thing. So uh, in our case, the only thing I'm going to change is the amount of uh, data this index can use down to 5 gigabits, which will be probably years worth of data in this case. So uh, now we'll just click Next and Next, and we'll click on Start Searching. Uh, you know, so far we've, we see our, our TCP port that we put in, our index, and our source type, but um, no data because we haven't sent anything yet. So let's get back to our Python script and send it some data. So what I've opened up here is Notepad++. I'll, I'll send a link in the description, but um, this is also the script I have down in our, our description as well. So basically I took our DHCT 11 example script and I put into it a definition that I stole from the internet some, some time ago <laughs> for sending data over TCP. This works really well with Splunk. Splunk likes to listen on TCP and as long as we include the slash n at the end of our message, it'll know that that's a new log, that's the single line format. So let's go ahead and copy that. Uh, you can also just transfer it via SCP to your Raspberry Pi if you prefer, but I'm going to copy it, run Python, and then just paste it in so to give it a test. So let's, uh, we ran our script. Our last line is to send that data to Splunk. So let's go rerun our search here. And there it is. We have our data in Splunk. So uh, just by basically running that test script, I was able to get my data into Splunk. Um, so let's, uh, what we're going to do here is expand the log and actually tell it which fields we need to use. And now I'm going to t type in time chart, and I'll put this command down in, the sp in, our, in our description as well. Um, but we'll do time chart, average humidity, average temp, and then click on the visualize tab, and there we go. There's our chart. So great. Um, I'm going to change the format a little bit, mess around with it. So I can see uh, this temperature is in Celsius, so if you're like me and, you know, in America or the UK, I guess, uh, sorry, but I guess we need to get over it. Um, there are some formulas we could apply either in the Python script or in the Splunk to uh, convert it to Fahrenheit, but um, we're not going to do that as part of this video. All right, so uh, the next part, what we'll need to do is automate uh, this script so that it happens. We're going to do it via cron time, so once a minute, um, so that we can we can constantly update it. Um, the other thing that I'm doing right here is just uh, saving this as a dashboard panel. So uh, that way we have this cool um, chart, you know, just website that we can kind of go to and view that data. Um, right now, it won't really. Uh, Right now it's not 24 hours, so we're going to set it to a one hour window, and we're also going to tell it to auto refresh here. So uh, we'll save that, and now we just need to go get it some data. So let's let's automate our script and see how that looks. So going back into our Raspberry Pi, um, I have copied over that uh, script via SCP, but again, you can just copy it into a text file called send in, I did send in um, So I'm going to run it once, then make sure that it runs okay, that I don't get any errors. Next, I'm going to go into cron tab. I'll do cron tab dash e to edit it, and I'm going to use my favorite editor, Nano. Sorry for you Vi guys out there. Um, so we want to do every minute, every hour, day of month, month, and day of week. So basically run every single minute. So star, 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 five for each of those, and that will run. Then we're going to use our home directory. Then we're going to put in the name uh, of the folder that we have in it, which is that DHT11 we got from Git. And then we'll put in the name of our Python script we wrote. So we'll save that there. All right. Uh, once that's saved, um, we just I'm checking the date here to see when the minute's gonna roll over, how long I have to wait to check uh, um, check Splunk. So what I did is I, I went ahead and <laughs> paused the video for a little while and got us uh, hours worth of data here. So we can now kind of see that, but let's mess with the visualizations a bit, see if we make it look a little better. Oh, there we go. I like this line chart. That looks nice. So we have humidity on this side. 
we have temperature on this side and we can now watch that over time so either way you know maybe this would be good in a data center uh, there's a little bit more we can do here to clean this up we can you know name the axis if we'd like to something other than default uh, we can do chart overlays or set the minimum and maximum values for the x and y axis um, either way feel free to mess around with that but more or less uh, with that running we'll be getting updating data every every minute and we could watch this over months or weeks or years whatever we wanted to do so um, I hope you guys uh, found this video useful uh, for the rest of this I'll just play some music and I'm just gonna be uh, messing around with some of the settings to change how the chart looks so take it easy